Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Knoten Corp podcast. It feels kind of weird because I just filmed a video. Maybe you have seen that. I don't know exactly when they will come out. Hopefully in the right order. But we are back. I took a break. I went to the bakery, got some food, made myself a tea in my lovely... I don't know, can you see that? My whale... Uh, big mug it's like the cheesiest thing i own i think um but it's just giant so it's perfect for tea so, yeah my name is johanna if you don't know that uh i live in north germany i have a knitting podcast where i talk all about my knitting what i'm finishing what i'm knitting currently on and what i spent my money on <laughs> knitting wise at least um and Wow, I'm exhausted. Um, but I'm also excited because I think this is like my third attempt to film this. Uh, I wanted to film the two weekends before, but last weekend the weather was so bad that it was like so dark that there was no point in filming and also it got me really depressed. Like it was so grey and I really didn't feel like talking. And the weekend before, I, I think I've been I've been staying at my dad, so that's not a uh, good filming as well because I I can't take all of my knitting to my dad. I mean I overdo it every time, anyways, and take like projects for a month, but that's still not everything. So I hope this one goes well but that also means we have a lot 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 more knitting content for today than i was planning for um which also resulted in me doing two videos and not one um whew, i am out of breath um but so first of all i wanted to thank you or thank everyone who left a comment on my knitting plans video it was very well received and i loved the feedback that i got especially to the topic of knitting budget or the cost of knitting very um, interesting insights and personal views and uh, i was very nervous on touching on that subject and when i was editing that video i was like oh no i forgot so much that i wanted to add and was so unsure if i should leave it in but um yeah generally the feedback was great and i definitely thinking about maybe coming back to that topic in the following months but we will see also i got a thumbs up for the topic of a, a local German indie brands video. I just don't really know how logistically I am doing that. If we're doing like window shopping and I share my screen or if I'm waiting until I ordered some of the yarns myself and I can show it and talk about it and have a little bit more experience with it so that is definitely in the planning i i just need to find an angle how to attempt to film that um yeah and like i said i accumulated a lot of stuff uh, i needed to re clean after the first video and set up for the second video because it's just so much so much stuff at the moment knitting wise but that means a lot to look forward for to you and a lot of knitting for me <laughs> um so let's start with finished objects uh, i'm obviously wearing one but we will come back to that one later first one i, I i'm trying to go through the order of how i finished them which will leave me so yeah, we have two sweaters, two accessories. Did I finish more? I don't think so, but that's enough already. I finished my Seaway pullover. Oh, it looks so nice in the camera. It's a little bit crinkly, but because it was lying in my, um, what is it called? Wardrobe. So 
Yes. The Seaway Pullover by Ozetta, knitted in, oh, uh, I heard yarn, I think it's called, in the color mist. And um, first of all, I managed to use up every little centimeter of that yarn. Uh, so my plan totally worked. Last time, I think, I had finished one sleeve and was knitting on the second sleeve and still had to bind off the bottom ribbing and was seeing if I would uh, get a little bit of uh, meterage, around 10 grams, um, to lengthen the body and that worked perfectly. And I have to say, until today, this is the best fitting sweater I knitted yay I think with every round I'm doing like it fits even better like in the beginning I was knitting the sleeves too short then I had a period where the body was not long enough and now I'm finally getting there <laughs> and um yeah it is stunning I got a lot of compliments I already worn it a lot of times I still haven't taken any pictures of it I'm I feel like even though I'm quite active on Instagram I'm really behind on posting like fo pictures on my screen that just reminds me I have another uh, I have another uh, finished object that I forgot so I think I talked about the pattern quite a lot last time. Um, first of all, when we leave out my struggles with the pattern, I love knitting this like wavy texture. I think it looks a little bit like the the bow or the curl that the a wave does. So I think the sea wave theme really fits. It has like a kind of a, like a mock neck and more like it's a drop shoulder construction and a more tighter sleeve than i'm used to and some ribbing at the bottom it's the perfect texture because you do certain rounds of just stocky net knitting which is very relaxing but then you have rows where you have to knit the texture like the pattern and it's like not only plain stocky net which was really really nice I think I was a little bit off gauge and I needle, uh, uh, I used a way smaller needle size. I think I've knitted this on 4mm and I think the pattern is 5 or something. But I think I was only like one, one or two stitches off gauge. Um, I already talked about the modifications I did for to reach a certain body circumference and um, my struggles with the sleeves you can still see that after blocking that you have like this very uh, strong decrease line and then you have a straight sleeve after that I will insert a small video of me wearing the sweater unblocked and then after that blocked the effect is not that strong on the camera as I hope because I wanted to post it as a reel on Instagram and I think for it doesn't have like that block unblocked effect as much but oh I'm sorry but for the for me as someone as the person wearing it it was a huge difference like obviously the, the, these are cables so they were when I finished the sweater and put it on, it was quite tight and it looked very unflattering, at least in my point of view. And the, the sleeves were very, very tight and uncomfortable. I was like, oh no, I don't like it. And then I blocked it and it turned out all right. <laughs> I mean, it turned out great. I love it. Um, so what I did is I definitely... Um, stretched out the body i am not 100 percent sure if it's like an, if it's like 20 centimeter like if i stretch it to 120 centimeters or even more you will see it on the screen but i blocked it to the size that i wanted width wise and also length wise and what i also did i blocked the armhole and the upper part of the sleeve also width 
guys so I, I did like that so that this will come a little bit more airy and I have a little bit more positive eaves, ease around my bicep my upper arm uh, because I don't have like skinny arms and since the first three sizes I knit to S3 have the same uh, stitch count it was really tight around my upper arm and it it fitted beautifully um, the yarn this is BFL uh, is very drapey which if I, I I feel a lot of like podcasters or people I see knitting often aim to have a drapey fabric I am usually not the biggest fan like this for example is the opposite of drapey and I prefer it and but I do like this like I think having like one sweater which is more of a drapey I think you can see that like it moves quite a lot it is nice and like I said it fits so so well uh, like lengthwise sleep wise width wise everything and i wore quite a lot of times to work already and i think the yarn held up very very well like okay you can see a little bit of peeling but like there are like two or three of these little pebbles wow this is a funny angle um but all in all this has barely peeled for something that I wore like two or three times a week for a month now. So it holds up very, very well. Interesting enough, like the shoulder seam is quite wide, quite wide on the back. Like it is doesn't lie on the top of your shoulder, but more on your shoulder blade in the back. So you can't really see it from the front which is cool um i have i don't have a strong opinion about that um the only thing uh what i might have to do is put an elastic into the neckline or maybe crochet inside of the neck because you because it's so drapey it draws down the mock neck and it goes wider and wider and wider everywhere which i don't want but i haven't done that yet because i don't know how visible i mean you can see it in this mock neck as well but like my this is not a normal throat <laughs> uh, this is my very very thick thyroid which needs to be um taken out in a few weeks and um so but it's also very sensitive so i don't really like wearing something tight with a few of my sweaters i had to take out the elastic over the last few months to be able to wear them because otherwise you, you get a, like a choking feeling around the the lower part of your throat and so i need to wait until i had my surgery but yeah lovely lovely sweater i really should take finished object pictures because it's it's one I'm really proud of um, and which I really, really like. I also finished another hot water bottle cover, the Maxine hot water bottle cover number two. Um, it was nearly finished in my last podcast episode. I gifted it to my co-worker. She loved it. She uses it now. Oh, I have left in my mouth. Um, regularly, um, which I know because she moved into our office space. She was in another room before and yeah. Like, just seeing her using it nearly every day makes me really happy because the most I worry is always like when they just use or wear one of my gifted knits out of courtesy, but don't really use it in their everyday life. And she does it definitely. And that makes me very happy. And I have well, a lot in my mouth. Um, Another thing that I nearly forgot was the Sophie scarf that I also knitted for a friend with the kind of cashmere classic in the light gray color. It is sent off to its new owner, uh, but though I took some finished object pictures, which I can uh, insert. Um, I was 
little bit confused by the pattern in the beginning because when I started knitting it, it just looked wrong. It just looked weird. The eye cord wasn't eye cording. Um, and I was like, am I doing something wrong? This can't be it. I heard no one speak about like that the beginning looks weird. And so many people knit the Sophie scarf and I was like, how can that be? Like it's so such an easy beginner pattern. Like what the hell? And yeah, so I, I think I cast it on four times or something, um, but always like only like this bit. And then I re-knitted it again because I thought I was doing the eye cord wrong until I realized in the beginning, it just looks weird and you have to knit a certain part of it until it just like looks the way uh, the Sophie scarf is supposed to look and I I mean the one thing I do have had in mind when I talk um, heard other people talking about the Sophie scarf like how not annoying but en not engaging but like how much work it is to keep up with the increases and decreases and I didn't find that actually tricky. I watched TV, TV while doing it because it's it's the same as doing like sleeves. You have to decrease then as well. And uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, it's not my favorite kind of pattern. Definitely still not a believer, um, but it was okay. It's it's not that it bothered me or anything after I found out that I'm doing everything right. But uh, and my colleague, uh, my colleague, my friend um, was very happy about it because she was also having um, a cold and was really needed something for her throat. So that was great. And um, yeah, and the cashmere was great. I measured it halfway. Uh, or oh, I measured it before starting and um, knit until I had like halfway used up of the ball and then made it, I mean, I kind of knitted between like, I think size one and size two, like what is it, like small and large. And yeah, just a mindless little knit. I'm considering knitting one for myself, but I'm not really sold. I'm still looking if there is something else I wanted it, but we will get into that at the end of the video. I also finished my balaclava in Noro Madara in the color Sake. Uh, this is the November balaclava by Petite Knit. You knit it in fisherman rib and have like at the neck and around the face one by one ribbing. I will put it on just for the fun of it. Um, I posted a picture of myself on Instagram because after I finished it, I realized that I only have overhead he headphones, which are very impractical when you wear this because you have to put them over your ear, uh, like over the fabric, which surprisingly works. You can still listen to music, but it looks even sillier than it does right now. So I wanted to have this, I mean, this is like over a sweater now, but I wanted to have this for bike riding. Um, it gets very windy and cold and a lot of my hats don't cover my ears. So obviously with this mission accomplished, my ears are covered, but that gives the conflict with headphones. But what I didn't consider is that this doesn't come very far down on your forehead so it barely covers my hairline and my forehead is left to freeze and we have a very wet cold here so it's quite we say it's biting cold because the humidity because of the closeness to the sea closeness is that a word yeah, but we live very close to the sea and especially in winter we have sea fog quite a lot. So even though the temperatures don't fall that much, it feels very, very cold and it's very uncomfortable and it feels like a thousand needles prickling your skin. So you need something that covers your head and this doesn't do it. I can turn my head. So yeah, the original purpose I had for this 
doesn't really work i have to say i uh, still wear it because it's like a a scarf and a hood in one and i kind of wear it more like that uh, when i went to hamburg or did some shopping or something because one thing i find really nice is like when you go inside in a store you don't have to take off your head and put it in your bag because the room like the store is climatized and very hot um you can just let it fall and the risk of leaving your head somewhere reduces very much and i am prone to losing my head so this i find very practical um but i do think one is enough i i don't think i need a second balaclava um because like i said the original purpose isn't going to work with this i still wore it a few times riding my bike to work but more on the days that weren't like freaking cold and i didn't need a huge scarf i could just wear like this neck cover thing so yeah and i haven't blocked it because it is sitting perfectly right now and i'm very worried that, like because of the yarn grew quite a lot when i knitted my friend her sweater and this is fisherman's rib so i'm a little bit worried that it's going to be giant but i really like the novo yarn in this um fabric and in this uh garment so it's like huge success i nearly used the all of it that I have left, but I think it uses exactly 100 grams. So quite a good choice. The last thing that I finished is my cloud sweater that I'm wearing. Uh, this is kind of funny because I haven't even casted that on the last time I did a podcast and not even in my knitting plans video. And that shows maybe how much knitting time I had. And also, if you know the struggles I had with this. So, um, I, I think I will get up at some point. But let me talk about the yarn first. So that pattern is also by Petit Knit. Quite a lot of Petit Knit today. And uh, it's called the Cloud Sweater. It is supposed to be knit in a blown or chain yarn with a mohair, I think. But I saw the pattern and I was like, I want to have that in unspun yarn. And I ordered, or I bought, I actually bought it in a saw, um, Manchelope from the Wool Dreamers in the color Gris. I think it's the second color. The only lighter color is the uh, natural cream sheep color um it's a beautiful beautiful heathered beigey gray which is just yeah one of my favorite colors like cool toned beiges or warm toned grays <laughs> or just heathered together so and it comes in uh two strands in these cakes and i swatched with it in january and Kind of met gauge or was like one stitch off of gauge and was planning or I, I did start and cast on on knitting this only with the manchelope um and after my i i put out my knitting video my my knitting plans video um hayley from the knit weekend hit me up and was like do i have to tell you like my a uh, project that I knitted only holding the Manchelope double without a strand of mohair. It actually didn't look great after a very short time period. Um, she showed me pictures and I immediately got what she meant. Like, um, I mean, this is a very matte fabric where everything gets stuck to you and i was already a little bit worried about the topic of peeling because it's unspun yarn just held on its own and uh, basically i think a lot of like dirt is caught on this mat but very fluffy fiber and i think it starts peeling quite easily and i didn't get a Stand of mohair in that store when I bought this because they did only had like two or three brands and none of them had a matching 
mohair color and the co the co-worker there she was like oh i i knit my sweater that she was wearing also holding unspun yarn on its own but what she had was plotilope and i think plotilope is much more rustic in comparison to manchilope so manchilope is a very soft unspun yarn so i could imagine that plotilope works better hold on its own or held on its own so at that point when Haley wrote me i already had knit the complete back yoke and was wanted to cast on the front yoke front of the front of the yoke i was like okay this sucks but i don't want to knit a sweater that looks like dirty after the second wear uh, that's like not not the purpose of my knitting it's too much time and too much money you spend on it even though this is a very affordable yarn in Germ from like a, a german point of view and so i ordered knitting for olive in the color uh, silk mohair in the color oat which i already knew was kind of a perfect color match i mean when you look at it this is definitely more beige and has more like it looks nearly like a uh rose undertone while this is like in comparison this looks much the manchilope looks much more gray but still together they make the perfect fabric to say um the the mohair fluff you can't really differentiate from the manchilope when you knit them together you only see the lighter uh silk strand peeking through here and there um so yeah i unraveled the unspun yarn which was time consuming um because it ripped a few times when you have to unravel but i just felted it back together and then i cast on again with these two but i held still the manchilope double because i wanted to use the yarn that i had unraveled and that had felted already together these two strands so i would need to hold like three strands all in all and as you remember i only did a gauge swatch with the manchilope and that was my fall down i don't know if you say that like that but um yeah, so I was re-knitting the back and then I started like at some evening the front because I really wanted to have that sweater and was really impatient. But when I finished the back already, I was like, wow, they don't fit on my needles, which is weird because these needles are exactly like the width I, I usually have my one side of the sweater and i usually knit between like 20 to 30 centimeters positive ease so 120 to 130 centimeters and i was aiming for 130 centimeters as well if it would be 135 i would be fine as well so i was already like a little bit confused from the why the back yoke was already not fitting on my needles and i measured it and i was like 77 centimeters i was like that's weird but somehow i don't know what ha like i think i rarely had such a stupid moment in my knitting time uh, i just cast on the front and i was like ah we can just like modify the front so it won't add up which is like stupid because if you ever knitted a uh drop shoulder design you kind of like knit the same stitches knit the same amount of stitches from the back also in the front and you increase a little bit under the armhole but that's just like a few stitches so like there isn't much there where you can cut down your stitches or modify it and so i finished the front and wanted to join in the round i was like this looks massive and i measured it and it was like 155 centimeters bust circumference and i mean i'm all here for positive ease like 20 to 35 centimeters is already quite a lot of positive ease in comparison to what other people prefer but 55 centimeters of positive ease is even for me too much uh because i think 
my other my upper body is all in all only 50 centimeters long so i'm just a very short person and uh having like 155 this is it would be ridiculous so i was sitting there i was like oh my god this means i need to unravel it again again a second time but i got over myself and used actually a train ride i had of one and a half hour to unravel everything and let me tell you the only thing which is worse than unraveling unspun yarn on its own is unraveling unspun yarn held with mohair and the reason is because when you unravel the unspun yarn you have to pull at it to get it out and every time you pull at it it lengthens a little bit so um and you can't just tug on the string of mohair because then just the the unspun yarn is stays as a stitch i tried that <laughs> um so when you want to roll them up together you have like the same amount like the the silk strand doesn't change in length it's the same after unraveling it but this like with every time i unraveled it it got longer and longer and longer or ripped even and so i had like this these like uh parts where i had like a straight uh like the same length of silk mohair but like twice the length of the unspun because it just got longer and longer with every time i unraveled it and i bought them up into yeah, a huge yarn ball it was like that size but when i wanted to re-knit with it i had the struggle that i unraveled the mohair with the unspun and had had like in the same um part i had like much more unspun yarn than mohair i hope this does make sense it was a nightmare and basically what i had to do was like at some point you could just like can't push the unspun to the end anymore because it gets twisted uh, it was a nightmare i had to cut it off and split splice it back together at the right point but I did, had to do that like every two meters at some point and I was so annoyed by it. This took every ounce of patience out of me and I'm not a very patient person. And I was so glad when I reached this point and I could start a new plate and didn't have to go through that nightmare of knitting with the unraveled yarn. So if you're planning on knitting with unspun yarn, please gauge swatch beforehand and don't unravel it <laughs> with a silk mohair. Um, so yeah, but I, I have a hundred percent, I have to say 100% that was me not thinking when I already knew the backside was 77 centimeters, like how should the front be smaller uh, with the same stitch count? And uh, I don't know. I don't know what came over me because usually I'm very good at knitting math. And uh, before re-knitting it a third time, I did the calculations this time and it turned out I needed to knit a size extra small to get a 130 centimeter bust, which was a first for me because usually I I knit extra large sizes or even bigger because I'm off gauge but I never knit an extra small and obviously that was the only plus because knitting, knitting in the stitch count of an extra small goes by way faster than knitting an extra large so um so and I think all in all my uh gauge change i think petite knits gauge is 17 stitches per cent 10 centimeters and i had a gauge of 14 stitches per 10 centimeters so that's a huge difference and um yeah that's that um i will get up and show you the sweater okay i needed to close my my pants before so that's how it's looking right now um yep 
30 centimeters of positive ease. That's the back. <sighs> Ta da! And I can show you a closer look of the stitch definition and the details. She has like these garter or pearl edges at the, what is it, like shoulder line and also before you start the sleeves, which I really liked. I think they are nice detail. You have a rolled uh, neck because you just cast off in stockinette. And you have um, f a few rows of one by one rib and then just stocking it so it kind of rolls in on itself. I am 100% happy with the fit. It has the perfect length, like where my hip, hip bones start. Are these my hip bones? No, my hip bones are here. So where my hip dips <laughs> and also with the sleeves, I'm very happy. Um, this is by far the squishiest, comfiest and cloudiest, that's not a word, but sweater I have ever knit. So cloud sweater actually describes the sweater very well. Um, it's so damn comfy and you just want to squishes all the time um and yeah i'm very happy today it's seven degrees and i'm fine wearing it so it's not that i'm melting in it because obviously with two strands of unspun yarn with a mohair it's a very thick yarn but all in all i only used 420 grams so 320 grams of manchilope and nearly exactly four boards of knitting for olive um i for once i put the quite precise information into my revelry project and i will leave it linked below if you also are planning on knitting this with unspun yarn held with mohair because i got some requests from people um who are like oh i want to knit it as well how is it going and i was like it's a nightmare but i love it um so I think to meet actually gauge, it would have been probably enough to hold Manchelope single with the knitting for Olive, uh, well, with any kind of mohair. Um, but that also comes with the trouble of separating these cakes because they come spun in uh, two strands, or not spun, uh, but come two stranded is what I'm saying. Um, but I think the concept of the sweater is to have a very lightweight sweater. Obviously, having three strands, it's still a lightweight sweater for the thickness it is, but it is heavier, I guess, in comparison to what the original recommended yarn, like this chain yarn with a mohair is. Um, still, I'm, I'm loving it. I am even considering if I should try out a chain yarn or blown yarn. Usually I'm not the biggest fan of them because they feel very processed and I'm, I'm more into like unprocessed yarn, like for example this one. But I only like the I am struggling to find other colors that I like in unspun yarn because otherwise I would just knit it in unspun yarn again because I already knitted like these three neutral sweaters plus this so I really don't need any brown beige gray white cream sweaters anymore in my life I think I'm solid now and I really don't like the colors like which aren't like natural colors of manchilope and the plotilope feels very scratchy and also i'm not really sold on the color choices and the newton thing i find also a little I, I i think the effort you have to put in to get the yarn is too much for me oh the parade is starting i hope you can't hear that 
um so yeah i don't know i might i i definitely could imagine knitting myself a second sweater because i love the fit and i love the light weightness of this is that a word i don't know and i really like the not drapey <laughs> but like kind of stiff stiff fall of it um and hopefully after the surgery this also sits a little bit better because i think now it's quite visible where the wow it gets really loud um i hope you can hear me over the trumpets um but the line is very visible and then it bogs out because yeah like i said because of my swollen swollen throat um you don't have that issue if you don't have a swollen thyroid uh, and it looks like like it is looking on petite knit so yay <laughs> um long story but i have still one plate and 80 grams of the second plate left over because i bought five and i have one ball of the knitting for olive because i also bought five uh of left over so we will see what will become that, but I'm not in a hurry. This goes just into stash and um, maybe become a project next year. Um, and that's all to my finished object. We are into whips, like I said. And since I finished one of my, I, I think I always have like two to three sweater whips and then like a few accessory or sock knitting patterns but this one was one of my main knitting projects i kind of banged my um navy knot pullover because i was i i mean i'm my main knitting times in the evening after work and knitting on a dark navy fing fingering spot weight yarn wasn't really enjoyable i think i will wait until it gets a little bit warmer and it's also a more lightweight sweater so I still can knit in it in May or something but what I want to have finished soon is my swipe over no polo in what is it called again the yarn is Serrano Derero Natura Serrano which is their Aaron weight yarn and i'm already quite far um so it is like in this burgundy not burgundy but like quite deep red and gray beige color I can just show you my swatch um and i did knit quite a few centimeters of the body already and currently knitting on one of no on that sleeve and this has been been benched for a few days as well because after finishing the Racklin yoke i was really unsure of my choices of positive ease i am not that experienced with uh Racklins. i usually knit drop shoulder or and i knitted a few circular yoke sweaters i only knitted one t-shirt which i barely wear and i'm thinking of frogging and using the yarn in a different project and i knitted my um cumulus blouse which i don't wear <laughs> spoiler alert uh, because the drops mohair is so scratchy that i can't bear it next to skin and the neckline is so weird that everything that you put under it looks also weird so still haven't figured out how i make gonna make that work but yeah usually i like 20 to 30 centimeters of positive ease but what i see other people knitting with raglan constructions is a lot less positive ease uh, in comparison to dropped shoulder designs and also with bigger bus um, people tend to knit it also with less positive ease but i do like the look of a lot of positive ease so i wasn't sure if that is just a personal preference or it has actually something to do with how the garment fits and 
I guess it's somewhere in between. So I have, so this is actually, yeah, it, it was lying around for a few days because I did a mid project vlog because I was really unsure if I like the fit because I tried it on and basically where you have the diagonal lines, uh, it bunched up a lot under the armholes because it had a lot of extra fabric and I'm knitting this on five millimeter needles and which makes a quite a tight fabric but I blocked my swatch and it loosens up a lot after blocking and makes it very like for me who knits a lot with rustic yarn makes it very soft I wouldn't call this a very soft yarn but it soften up, softens up and gets much more drapey um so i wasn't sure how it's going to sit after blocking so that's why i did the mid project block and i'm very happy i have 20 centimeters on positive ease on a very heavy weight raglan sweater and it looks great that's all to say i won't try it on now because probably it's finished next time and then i can just show you um but yeah, that also resulted in me continuing with the body since uh, until I finished the two colors, like I have a little bit of that second color hanging from the uh, body, but I only have four balls in total left and I wanted to see first how much I need for the sleeves and then go back to the body. And hopefully we'll be able to finish that. At the moment, I don't feel that confident, but it's a quite big gauge and on five millimeter needles. So it goes by quite fast. And you also need only half of each color because it's striped. So yeah. Um, also, I was right. The striping helps a lot because with this garment, like from here on, I was bored to death, to be honest. <laughs> because it's just stocky net but at least it's like uh, since it had such a big gauge it did quite fast this is also quite a fast knit um but also the stripes make it much more entertaining i don't know if i would be into it so much if it didn't have any stripes because i already knitted this one for a friend before another thing is like the stripes really help by <laughs> counting your decreases uh, which makes my life a lot easier as well and I found it very smart knitting the German short rows in the bag I mean first of all they are hidden by the folded over collar when you wear it but also like because you have I mean when you knit Sherman short rows you kind of have to go one way and then back. So that means two rows in one color. And then you, I think, which was, I don't even know which side was the beginning of the round. You switch at one of the Wackelin increases, the color. So you don't get, so there's like your color switch. I don't know, it makes a lot of sense. The pattern, doesn't do it justice it's like i think all the spectacle streak patterns are very short worded to a minimum but if you go go on the spectacle streak youtube account and put in the stripe overload polo they have for every part of the pattern like from the collar with like increases, decreases, the German short rows, the Rackland increases. They have for everything a video view. If I mean, if you would follow that, you probably wouldn't even need to buy the written pattern. Um, but with like the changing of colors, I followed this time the video because the video helped much more than the written pattern. And that way it's very easy, but in the written pattern and also on the website, you are not made aware of the videos which i found very sad i already mentioned that the first time i don't really get it um if you put out videos why aren't you marketing them as an instruction help so but i really like this color combination it makes me smile as you can see uh it has a little bit like circus vibes i think 
but I'm really into it like I'm not opposed against that um, and I think since the 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 yarn is knitted on five millimeter needles I definitely you could do it on six as well but the pattern for the gauge and the pattern I needed five I it's a very dense fabric not stiff but dense and you could definitely wear this great as an outer piece as well which I'm very much looking forward on walks and stuff and uh, so I don't really see it only as like a deep winter garment but I'm mainly knitting on that right now and yeah the color names I put onto the screen <sighs> Um, very, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised because I already nah, finished one, but uh, halfway through a second sweater of my knitting plan. So I'm keeping up really well with them. Um, another thing I started in January is the Lonely Leftovers vest. Um, which is kind of a nightmare to show, to be honest. Oh, maybe I need to un that so it is by wool and beyond who has a youtube channel now which is really nice i really like her aesthetic and she's coming out with a book i think first of all it's going to be only in swedish but she's definitely considering exp also publishing maybe in english i could even imagine myself getting it in swedish uh, funnily enough the scandinavian languages the knitting terminology in Danish, Norwegian and Swedish is very close to the German, like closer than the English. So translating that is easier than you think if you already speak German, uh, even though you don't know any of the languages. Just a random fact. Um, so that's how far I got. Uh, I finished the right panel, front panel and the back and I'm close to also finishing the left front panel so I can join back and the two front panels into the hole of the vest and then I need to do a massive eye cord. <laughs> so I'm knitting this with boucle yarn and a second, as a second strand I brushed alpaca by drops. And I, last time, I hadn't decided on what eye cord color I'm going to use. And I'm not going to explain where that color comes from, because for that you can watch my other video that I just posted. But uh, this is Knitting for Olive in Poppy Blue. And since I didn't want to knit something else with it that is close to my face, I thought it's perfect for a fun project out of Boucle to use such a fun color in this um, yeah, very experimental garment because, I mean, it's a Boucle vest. I mean, I, I, I'm still like, I don't know how I'm going to style that, but I'm still very much looking forward to having that. I am considering doing the armholes in navy and doing the middle part like the rest of the eye cord like the neck the front the bottom um in this or either doing this and this in navy and doing the strings in the light blue this could be also very cool but i think there's still a long way to decide on that um It's also a very interesting knit because obviously uh, it's just it's garter stitch so it's very simple knitting on one hand but it's also very slow knitting because of the boucle but on the other hand you knit it on six millimeter needles so though I went down on the front panels to 5.5 millimeter needles because the gauge was looking a little bit too see-through um, uh, what I found also really a little bit weird was the pattern doesn't give you instructions for 
the picking up stitches for the I cord and after the I cord it just says the total number that you should pick up but not the picking up weight uh, which I was definitely missing in, in this pattern like because this yarn is also a very different yarn from that like not only in my choice of yarn but also in her sampled it so yeah a pickup rate would have helped i i just calculated the pickup rate and that was fine as well but usually from other designers i am used to having the pickup rate with the pattern or in the find found it in the pattern um yeah and i'm slowly knitting on it this has like no hurry um it's just like when i feel like it i'm knitting on it it's i mean I, I i'm looking forward to the finished garment but it's like i'm not in a hurry also it's sitting in one of my bread basket bowls because i'm not bread baking anymore and i found oh they are great for whips uh oh we are already to an hour and <laughs> i have a lot to talk about so another um spontaneous cast on it's a very fun project wow Wow, the colors. I started a pillow because I was annoyed by the pillows I have lying on my sofa. And I mean, if you've been here long enough, I was planning on knitting pillowcases for some time. The colors come off weird on the screen. I can say that. But what I was hoping what this pillow gives me is um, the interior brand Hay vibes, but maybe it's giving more kids room vibes. I don't know. So I just used scrap yarns that I had lying around. I'm knitting this on five millimeter needles. This blue is not that purple. The other colors are true to color. So unknown white, the blue was a Sustene Grene uh, Anspan yarn, like roving yarn, unknown yellow, acrylic mustard color that's how I, how i'm doing it i cast on with judy's magic cast on all in all 110 stitches or 55 for each side i just did knit a swatch and did the math and then i'm continue knitting each stripe i ran out of red but actually the red of the uh so I'm overload polo is the right, uh, is the same red and has the perfect gauge. So if I have red left over, I can just use the red in here. So this is hibernating for the moment. Really fun project. Um, that's that, and we only have a massive amount of socks left. So like I said, I got really into the sock mood and also sock planning mood. And one sock I had cast on quite a while ago, but didn't really keep on knitting on, is this one. Um, yeah, I should have brought out my sock blockers to show you better the yarn. Um, this is Telling Yarns British, British Four Ply Sock Yarn in the Cal... Uh, something with m it's a dragon i will put it on the screen help with knitting for olive silk mohair and claret some scrappy uh leftover sock yarn held also with knitting for olive silk mohair and linen for the contrast heel and that contrast heel developed because i only have one ball of that red and i don't want to order another one and I wasn't sure if the 200 and something meters of one ball of yarn is enough for these socks because obviously I have much more of a 100 gram skein of fingering sock yarn than one ball of mohair, so nearly double. And so to play it safe, I said like, okay, I'm going to do contrast here, maybe contrast toe to save a little bit of yarn. I think I would have been, or oh, I would have been fine with knitting it only in the reddish color. Um, casting this on was kind of a struggle because I wanted to knit it on its own, but um, I couldn't really find a gauge that was working. Um, it could 
to, to, to shorten it and so I held it with a mohair and it makes this like beautiful like rosy reddish but also like interesting fabric and I, these will be the most expensive fancy socks I will ever have and I won't wear them in any shoes so another sock project I started and I'm actually really close to finishing is i have one sock finished uh this one i should have really gotten the sock blockers um this is the donegal yarn in the colorway ha a dk weight by nervous fiber i got that uh in 2022 and i still have a little bit of it this is not sock yarn she has her website closed at the moment because she had a baby um but I also used like with the heel, which is the part which is most hard wearing, um, Sunniskan Smart Yarn, which I had left over. And these are also going to be indoor socks. For me, they are my cookie socks. They look like cookies. And what I also did is I, in the afterthought, I crocheted with the black yarn because I still had something left over uh, onto it. And I really like the black edge onto it and the second one is nearly finished just need to do the toe and the crochet edge and also dk socks like how chilled are they in <sighs> i'm not reaching that yarn in three by four, one rip i don't know if you were able to see that but yeah very relaxing the red ones are two by two rip and then i have a third pair because I want to not reduce, but like before I can justify buying new sock yarns, I, I really need to knit some socks. I started this one, which is a funny one. Um, this yarn is by Rico, is it? I don't know. I will put the name on it. I knitted a sock already in this yarn and that sock felted and but I only knit one sock. So I had quite a lot left over and it's a fade like a gradual fade uh, in that yarn and i knitted a textured sock and this yarn doesn't lend to textured socks because it's like not plied really it's like twisted and very fluffy i think it has some alpaca content or something and you couldn't see the texture and um it's also not so easy to knit on so i decided like i'm not going to knit any fingering textured sock with this i'm going to hold it double and make a dk sock out of this just in plain stocky net for that i needed to split the yarn in half and what i wanted to do was match up the grade the fade the gradual fade which as you can see didn't work out <laughs> But I love it. Like, um, yeah, it, it, uh, I couldn't match the fade because they were fading in other directions. And now I have like this fading mar marble, which I love. Like, because one color is fading in another into another, but the other color is fading into a totally different color. So they create like this faded mar marble, which I find amazing. Um, so. Yeah, that's an idea I would have never had come up with myself. So funny coincidence. And if I find ever like uh, fading yarns again, I might do this again. Really looking forward to having these and knitting them on three millimeter needles. They are also like my doctor's appointment socks for right now. So I have 10 minutes left to finish this up. But I'm done with all of my whips and I have knitting plans. Um, next garment is after I finish this, my, this like textured cardigan from that magazine. This was the swatch and I'm using that yarn that I bought through Instagram, like this bergschaft wool that I have on counts. And yeah, that's going to be my next garment cast on. 
and also a gift knit sweater which is probably going to be gray as well but i can't show it because the person who i'm gifting to watches this youtube channel and i haven't really decided 100 percent on the pattern and the yarn yet but it's going to be a similar knit like from only stocky net to textured knitting it's interesting i i seem to have like very parallel knitting tendencies um i also needed to scratch an itch uh with springy colors because when i i knew i would knit a lot of like beige and gray and i really wanted to have some color which resulted in this uh but it also resulted in this and um yeah this yarn I bought with the blue I just showed you. It's knitting for Olive Heavy Merino. If you watched my last video, you know the story behind this. I wanted to try out that pea green color. And then I was at my parents' or my dad's place and went to the local shopping center. And they have a yarn department. And I've been looking at this yarn brand for some while. It's like one of these big chain brands in germany but i think a year ago i already was like interested in this yarn but didn't really know what to make of it and it's quite pricey it's me cashmere cloud 46 percent wool 34 percent cotton and 20 percent cashmere so and it has like these kind of like surrey rush alpaca vibes and i love the color like this is like more of a denim color in comparison to this and I'm thinking of making myself a small little scarf. And that's why I'm considering doing the Sophie scarf. But like you can't see any texture. You can't see any eye cord with this. So I'm not really sure which would be low impact and still look nice. Haven't found the perfect pattern. And since I had this and I found this, I was like, let's make a green hat because i am not in the business right now to buy hello hello i'm back but from a very different angle uh my phone just cut me off because i don't have any space on it anymore so this is filming me with my ipad which has not the quality intended for this video but we will just finish up here very fast um i think the last thing you've seen is this yarn um so yeah the a pea green from knitting for olive and this austermann kit silk in the color 28 it doesn't have a name and yeah i was just very intrigued i think it's blowing out a little bit because of the camera quality it's much more vibrant and this is a, bit, a little bit darker but they both have this yellowish undertone and i'm planning knitting a hat holding it with the navy blue from knitting for olive also the heavy merino and i also have some leftover scrappy mohair so um i'm thinking of doing the weekend because i still haven't done that and i have the pattern from a friend and i have a lot of like these very tight fitting beanies already and i i do like also wear them if they um a little bit more pointy and i could imagine doing like a blue brim and rest of it in green but haven't decided on it but this will be my accessory knit while doing all the gray sweaters and cardigans um so i have a little bit color in my life when everything starts to bloom outside and that's that i'm also i mentioned uh in my knitting plans that i'm thinking about a red sweater and i am tending more to a red cardigan cardigan at the moment was very heavily influenced by a social media influencer on instagram and when I reposted that, a lot of people replied to that. I mean, a lot of like in regarding to the followership I have, followership I have on Instagram, but um, who are also into the red cardigan trend. Like, I, I'm not original with that. 
a lot of people are hyping that. So I'm thinking about that, but I'm I don't feel ready to order yarn for that. Um nothing is really speaking to me at the moment. And another thing I got was stitch stitch markers from Seaside Stitches or what's her private Instagram handle Mia Nitz. Yeah, she is a German based uh, stitch mark producer maker um, she sells them through instagram and i really like her knitting and i really like her stitch markers um she also brought out a new collection since i bought them so one of them that i got are these like pearly uh, golden ones um and i think i have three of them i think yeah one is in use on here find them very cute and the other stitch markers they are even cooler <laughs> I just need to free my knitting um like where are they they are like these little animals and you can choose the color of the animals printed and I think she also have has different collections I think now she has a fish I really want that fish um but this is like this scandinavian horse i think it's called a dala or something and i'm looking for the second one then this one is a little bear and the third one is a little uh dove or seagull for me it's more of a dove um yeah, so they are very cute. I really like them. As you can see, they are all already in my project. She has brought out, I think, a pepper. Yeah, I think that's how you call it. A cloud and some other fun little um, stitch markers. So definitely check them out. I, I also love her packaging and I also could imagine buying myself some in the future um, and support German makers. <laughs> which is also really great and uh, stitch markers are always a, like kind of cheap way to to uh, add something fun to your uh, knitting without buying like 100 euro sweater amount of yarn but still getting yourself something that's at least how I justify buying stitch markers and um, I also got earrings from her but I haven't worn them yet and yeah highly recommend her and her knitting channel is also really cool she she knitted the uh, cloud sweater in bright red uh, I really loved her color color choice and with that since this angle is so weird and just makes me aware of all my very sad broken ends um, uh, I'm just going to touch up on some live things. So as you can see, I did a lot of knitting, but also as a, uh, how do you call that? I forgot the name for that. Uh, when you are overwhelmed with life, coping mechanism. Yes, for me, uh, knitting and thinking about knitting at the moment is a true coping mechanism because I am thinking about a lot about really big life choices. I haven't been happy with my workplace and living here uh, for nearly half a year now and have thinking about it, yeah, have been thinking about it quite a lot and I'm thinking of quitting and moving which are big life choices which come with huge consequences and um, yeah it's a little bit overwhelming where to start and to make a final decision and I also am going to have surgery in March where my thyroid is going to be removed it's still not 100% sure if it's going to be possible in the beginning of March but I'm hoping because it gives me a little bit of perspective and that will mean that I'm going to be on sick leave at least for two weeks. But uh, also it might be that I'm not able to talk. Uh, so I don't know how long it will take until 
I can film the next episode because right now we have middle of March, uh, middle of February and um, so we will see. Maybe I'm back faster than I think, maybe it takes longer, it's not really foreseeable at the moment but at least I will have a lot of knitting time with a sick leave of two weeks and so I'm pretty sure when we see each other next time I will have a lot to shock and show you and um, with that I think I have nothing written down anymore and will leave you into your weekend or work week or whatever day it is that I will post this and you will watch that and quit this horrible angle um, and we'll try to edit both videos so you will be able to see them as fast as possible. With that I say goodbye and I hope I see you soon. Bye bye!